my brothers and sisters in Christ. The narratives of the post-resurrection scenes recorded in the Gospels are all very interesting. Of particular intrigue to me are the number of people who appeared not to recognize the risen Lord when they first encounter him and then only gradually come to recognize him as they interacted. Mary at the tomb and the seven disciples who were fishing come to mind. And of course, this Sunday's Gospel, where the two disciples on the way in Emmaus failed to recognize him at first. St. Luke even recorded for us something prevented them from recognizing him. Have you ever wondered what was that, that something? One simple explanation is that the risen Christ had a glorified body and that probably contributed to it. But if it was simply that and just that, St. Luke would have told us. Personally, I think that something was more psychological in nature. A close mind. A close mind akin to having personal bias and preconceived worldview that we all put into practice in our daily life. Think of the simple experiments carried out by many scientific studies. It has been shown that we are all affected by unconscious bias and preconceived worldviews. For example, in one of the experiments, when four fictitious applicants are submitted for a job application, and each one has the same qualifications with the same work experience or similar work experience, the one who gets the interview is the one whose name fits into the employer's preconceived bias. Usually, it has more to do with race, ethnicity and gender. And I know this is true from experience. Every parish I have moved to, there have always been labels going around first. Oh, he is a conservative priest. Oh, he's a liberal priest. Oh, he's a city slicker. Or a country boy. A foreigner, etc. I hope I don't fit nicely in any of those. But sadly for some, no matter what I do, it ratified their preconceived bias about me. I am seen in the light people want to see me. I know this because, in time, several people, after they got to know me, dared to admit it. And I think it is this type of closed-mindedness with preconceived bias that was that something that stopped the people of our Lord's time to recognize Him after He rose from the dead. The truth stared them in their face, but their minds were closed. This explanation resonates too with how people who, who actually believe who are Christians behave in our time. How is it committed Protestant Christians can read today's Gospel passage and not see its link with the Eucharist? Sure, the Protestant Reformation throughout the Mass in the 16th century suggesting that for nearly the first 1,500 years or so, Christians before them were all wrong about the Mass. Yet the language of the Gospel clearly mirrors the language of the Eucharistic liturgy. Jesus took bread, blessed, broke, he gave. Still, one could argue that it's a tenuous connection, just happened to be worded that way. But then one should investigate deeper. What did the early Christian call their gathering at Mass? 
It was the coming together for the breaking of bread. Fractionis panis in Latin. For the Jews, the breaking of bread was a ceremonial gesture in the celebration of an ordinary meal. But for the early Christians, the breaking of bread, that term, was a reference to the Eucharistic liturgy. So when you read, they recognize him at the breaking of bread. Read, they recognize the risen Christ at Mass. St. Augustine in the 4th century, along with several of the, of the early church fathers, made an even more interesting suggestion. They suggested that our Lord actually did not want the disciples to recognize him immediately. They proposed the idea that our risen Lord wanted his disciples to recognize him fully only at the breaking of bread. In short, to connect them back to the mass that he instituted at the Last Supper, only a few days earlier. According to these, or these church fathers, Jesus wanted the disciples to see and understand what the Old, the Old Testament prophets had foretold in sacred scripture about the identity of the long-expected Messiah. We all know, well before his passion and death, our Lord spent a significant amount of time opening up sacred scriptures so the disciples, um, for the disciples to read them in new light and in his light and then to recognize how he was the one who was to fulfill all the prophecies and in ways unexpected to them or by them. Notice after the resurrection, with the two disciples on the way to Emmaus, he did the same. He explained the scriptures to them, and they exclaimed, We were we not sorry, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? He blew away the preconceived ideas and their worldviews and their unconscious bias that closed their mind to the truth and to the truth about our Lord and who it was right before them. Even today, many choose not to believe, for it is too outrageous to believe, too demanding to believe, too fearful to believe. For believing means having to change one's worldview to change having to change one's life perhaps the gospel passage should lead us to examine ourselves we must all ask ourselves what does it mean to recognize our lord at the breaking of bread to recognize our lord at mass like the early christians did and if believing, we live and behave no different from any other non-believer, then why bother believing at all? How has the risen Christ affect us for the better in our life's journey? <laughs>